Hi there, so in this little piece we're going to talk about plotting graphs, which is something you're going to have to do in labs and so on, and there are rules for plotting graphs, uh, and so we're just going to run through those so that you're aware, so you can do a good job in the labs. Um, so here's a graph, um, looks very nice, there's some data, looks like it's we're doing a straight line sort of thing, um, but there are some problems. Um, first off, what's, what's this box? This box is doing absolutely nothing for us. It's just wasteful chart junk. It, it's meaningless. And there's all these grid lines here. And you can have grid lines if you really insist. They make it easier to measure. Um, they give you what the parallel lines are. But they're a bit of a waste of time. So let's get rid of those. That's a bit better. And I've got tick marks. And I've got sub tick marks, which help me out. And really, ideally, although it's difficult to do in Excel, you really want a proper piece of software like Origin or MATLAB. Uh, really, we'd want the tick marks on the other sides as well, so we could measure across without getting our ruler wrong. Um, but there's a problem here too. Uh, we've got this trailing zeros on here, which are adding nothing for us. And we also have the big, obvious, staring problem is we don't know what we're plotting. We could be plotting bananas versus elephants, for all we know. So uh, let's do something else. Let's look at another graph. Here's one that's even worse. Here's, here's one where I can't actually read the numbers because they're printed so small just annoying, right? So we need to have a number big enough that you can read them when you put them on a page um, uh, in a reasonable size. Um, so here's a better graph. If the trailing zeros have gone. I've got some axis labels. Here I'm preserving position against load. So I'm stretching a specimen. I measure how much it's I've stretched it at position against how much load I had to apply in newtons, or thousands of newtons in this case, kilonewtons. That's quite a big load, 700 kilonewtons. That's a big lot. That's a lot. 70 tons. Um, but say it's something very chunky um, that I'm measuring and it's only going a few millimetres when I'm doing it. Um, I don't know, it's girder or something like that. Um, and I've got sensible amounts of precision on both of them. I've got tick marks. I've got my um, units labelled properly uh, in brackets, say. Um, and that all looks quite nice. That would be an acceptable graph. I've got some problems though. Um, what do I do? Really, I, I want to say that this is a straight line. Say it should be an elastic, it should be a straight line here, um, if it was performing perfectly linearly. Um, but uh, a lot of the time, you'll see people do something like this. They'll join the dots and maybe smooth it out a bit, which Excel will do for you very nicely. But, you know, that's obviously wrong. Physically, this line can't be right here. In fact, more extreme, uh, say here's some data taken from a stack exchange. The data really does the blue line, but if somebody's joined the dots, they get this. And if I s use the, that trend line that you've drawn, um, I would say it should be there. And of course, that's wrong, right? The line here is misleading me into making an interpolation that's wrong. Okay? So don't do that. Don't join the dots. What you need to do is think of precision appropriately and put a trend line on that's physically meaningful. If we have some hypothesis as to what the data is doing, we're doing science, we should have hypotheses, we should put a trend line on that's meaningful. Um, here's another error, apart from interpolation. Um, here's extrapolation. This is a cartoon from XKCD. This is a, a guy, he's talking to a girl. Uh, she wasn't married yesterday and today she's married. Um, and he's extrapolating and predicting by next month she'll have over four dozen husbands. <laughs> Better get some wedding cake. Um, and of course, that's, that's lunatic, right? She's not going to have four dozen husbands. She gets married once in her life, hopefully. Um, she probably presumably hopes that's what she got married. Um, and uh, so that's, you know, silly. Extrapolation like that is just silly from limited data. So you shouldn't extrapolate beyond the range of validity that that extrapolation is going to be. And if you can't, you shouldn't extrapolate at all. So here's a better thing to do. Here, I've estimated the uncertainty in each of my measurements and I've put an estimated straight line through, and that looks physically reasonable. Okay, And I could estimate the gradient in that straight line, which we'll do later in the course, um, and we'll do that rigorously later in the course, and I could estimate where it, it intercepts the origin and so on and so on. Um, there's a bit of a word to have about origins. If it's sensible, it's better to put the origin in. Otherwise, you're, uh, you might mistake some noise for being a, re a real measurement. Um, there's lots of examples of that in newspapers. Always watch out for that false zero. The newspapers do it a lot, and it's, ov it's obviously wrong. Um, and if you've got a, a lot of data that's varying a lot on the vertical axis, then quite often you'll want to do a log plot, something like that. Um, you could take the log of the number, and then the distances here would be the log of the number. So that would be one, uh, sorry, one there, 
Uh, zero there, log of one is uh, naught, be wrong. Log of 10 is one, log of 100 is two, log of 1,000 is three, log of 10,000 is four. And you w if you took the log of the numbers, they would be scaling incorrectly on here. But it's difficult to look at a log, so quite often we'll plot it like this with these, and then 20s there, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. As you take the logs, they get close together. Um, and this is some data that's varying over there, three orders of magnitude, over three orders of magnitude. And that's how to do a log plot. Um, so here's my checklist for graphs. Um, the axes should be labelled. Uh, they should have an appropriate number scale with appropriate zeros in them um, and an appropriate precision in those numbers. Um, the axes should be labelled with what you're measuring um, and with units on them. Um, you should have tick marks that enable people to measure from the graph. You should have appropriate error bars, if at all possible, and uncertainties on your data. And an appropriate physically meaningful trend line reflecting the hypothesis you have about what the data should be doing. Um, or at most, if you don't, just draw a guide to the eye through if you insist, but then you've got to state that it's a guide to the eye. Um, don't, whatever you do, join the dots. There's no physical meaning to it, but the line is pretending that there is. Okay? If you need to use a log scale, go ahead and do so. And no meaningless, no meaningless extrapolation or interpolation. Um, so that's it. That's how to make a good graph. So please go ahead, do so in the labs. Thanks a lot.